Hello everyone, Basic Ollie here. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another one of my videos. A very special video indeed. My first ever five hour endurance race in real life. If you watch this channel, you know it's all about endurance racing. We absolutely love endurance racing on this channel. It's basically what uh, we have built this whole channel on. And uh, yeah, to be able to actually do it in real life uh, was quite a special moment. Now, I just want to quickly break down exactly... Um, what this channel is, who I am, and how this opportunity came along. So, my name's Ollie. I run a channel called uh, Basic Ollie. I stream all the time on iRacing and make videos on it uh, and stuff like that. And like I said earlier, I kind of specialize in doing endurance races. That's what we do, and that's what I love doing on this channel. Uh, and out of the blue, I got a lovely message from a team called Proam from uh, Instagram, basically asking, look, we like your stuff, would you potentially be interested with working with us and doing a real-life endurance race in Silverstone uh, in a Ford KA? Um, now, every time we talk about the Ford KA, um, it's considered quite... It's considered... A, a, it's one of those cars where people look at it and go, really? Really? But trust me, it's some of the best racing you can ever have. So when the opportunity came... I snatched at it, all right? I absolutely took it. And the guys at Prime were really, really nice. Uh, they were absolutely superb the whole weekend. Very professional and just really, really nice blokes to get along with. Um, yeah, the whole team was brilliant. And yeah, just a, a fantastic experience. But yeah, anyways, so uh, without the way, this is a five-hour race around Silverstone. Uh, it is the national circuit. Uh, we're in the 4K. There are no modifications to the engine at all in this series. OK, so it is just a five hour race. I think you needed a minimum of three pit stops throughout the race. And uh, when it comes to the amount of drivers, I wasn't quite sure. But yeah, three pit stops uh, minimum. And in this race, we do actually qualify P13. Uh, P13, whilst the sister car, uh, I think, qualified P7. Um, now... I'm going to show you what happens in the race. I'm going to share the uh, the stream, the actual stream, which you can check out. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to watch the whole race back. But I'm going to basically show the stream and I'm going to show uh, the GoPro footage at the front and the back of the car. So you're going to see all the action whilst it unfolds. Uh, I'm going to show you some behind the scene uh, footage as well of what it looks like kind of in the garage uh, and, you know, uh, doing prep for uh, pit stops and stuff like that. That. But anyways, without further ado, uh, yeah, we'll crack on. Hopefully that's a, enough of an explanation. And um, yeah, if you've got any questions, please do let me know uh, down in the comments. But uh, yes, let's crack on with the video. And uh, yeah, let's get this race underway, shall we? All righty then. Welcome to Silverstone. We are in the 10A garage for the week. So driving in the car for those that are interested is myself. Uh, Mr. Much and Mr. Midgley as well. Now, we all know Gordy, uh, teammate of Jimmy in the Praga last year, um, but we'll also be sharing the car with Mr. Midgley himself. Uh, experienced driver, um, was in the KA Enduro Series last year, I believe. And, uh, yeah, there's a little image there, a little video to show you that this is a dangerous thing to do. So, yes, please do be careful out there if you decide to go and do some racing yourself. Uh, some back scene footage here just before the race start of all the food, drinks, some Mango Loco, of course. And, uh, yeah, here's uh, some footage of us doing a little pit stop practice but like I said we will be uh, starting in P13 we are the 8 car and the sister car is the um, 12 car and they will be starting in P7 uh, I will now hand you over to the commentary team uh, and I will share some onboard footage as well of the race but yeah sit back and relax and enjoy this five hour race around Silverstone and it is an absolute banger come at the end of five hours time but controlling the field is GM performance if you're watching the stream there on the extreme left hand side of your screen on the right is the yellow and uh, blue machine that's kind of before six mil now racing but the field is working its way through Woodcut now and the red lights are on so as soon as they go out we will be able to get this five hour race underway 
So it's all eyes on GM Performance. We will try and bring starting drivers to you as and when we get them. But looking at GM Performance, looking at Milner Racing, the pair of those who have already started to pull away from the field behind. The lights go out, and with the very little speed difference between them from uh, the, the pace they were rolling to flat out, we get this race underway. There's, what, three, maybe four wide, but GM Performance hold the lead. It is Darren Stapleton uh, behind the wheel of that car leading the way, followed then uh, by... That being John Milner, I believe. Is it John Milner? Yes, I think it is. Um, working his way through in second place. Leaving the pit lane now is car number 96. That is uh, Porsche Carrera Motorsport. But in towards Magnus and Beckett's for the first time. Good start from GM Performance. Yeah, I'm just wondering whether it would be helpful to go. We can tell who the driver is from the timing stream now. The cars have all gone through the timing beam. Uh, and so the... Uh, Oh dear, one in the gravel already. So yeah, you don't win the race on the first six. lap. Number, number six is already six, yes. Yeah, that's uh, David Murphy, unfortunately. Or Peter Simmons. Uh, I'd imagine it's David Murphy looking at the timing screen. Very well driven, Mr. Murphy. He's got that car out of the gravel and um, sort of minimised that yellow flag period. Right, so uh, in the lead is 81, or was over the line, and that is at the moment Darren Stapleton. And Johnny Milner is in number 46, in number 180. Uh, we have Adrian Wood and then in number 11 it is as they come through for the first time uh, Brian Crawford Brian Crawford but let's just see where that's still the order who have we got now leading here Stapleton and Milner in the first two places up into third place number 12 and that's the uh, driver change of driver there Richard Jepp is the driver of number 12 and he's in third. In fourth place is number three. And that is Liam Bidgeway. And is that somebody in the pit? Yeah, that's the car number six. That is uh, David Murphy into the uh, into the pit lane after that one the first lap. Right. And then in sixth place we have 66. Is it? Or oh, no, 65 it has to be. Uh, and we don't have a 66. Uh, and that is... T. Owen. Yeah, that's Toby Owen. We no longer have GM Performance in the lead of the race. I think no. they've dropped right the way down to fourth place at the moment. So on the brakes, in towards Brooklands go the field. And the thing is, we could call them as we see them now, but by the time they've worked yeah, their way out of Luffield and behind the BRDC clubhouse, they'll be in a completely different order. Yes. There was a very committed move there from Leon Bidway. He very nearly won wide. Hopefully in back out onto circuit. Now we will see David Murphy after his slightly gravelly moment on the opening lap of the race. Unfortunately, I think we've got another issue Ooh. there. That is for car number 67, original Checkers Racing, that almost correct me if I'm wrong, it had contact with the Porsche was. Carrera motorsport car. Of course, that's the car that started in the pit lane. It is. Where is it now? Now, at this point in the race, it was going extremely well. We were one and two as a team. Uh, Gordy also was now leading the race. But unfortunately, a safety car was called. Well, unfortunate or not, I'll let you guys uh, decide in the comments because this safety car did kind of screw us a little bit, all right? So safety car has now been deployed. Uh, the team makes the decision to get both the eight car and the 12 car into the pits. So the Gordy is now going into the pits with the sister car directly behind. But unfortunately, as smooth as the pit stop was, Gordy had a stint during the middle of this race where he was basically in no man's land. So he was getting no tow and wasn't able to lift uh, as much as probably he'd like to before any sort of braking uh, zone or points. So he ended up using more fuel and that is quite crucial because unfortunately, 
Um, with this pit stop that you're going to see, the sister car manages to leave before us. Now, that's not a bad thing, but the way it worked is the safety car was literally coming around the corner again by the time the pit stop was done. And because we had to put more fuel in, cost an extra 10, 15 seconds, the pit exit actually closed. The pit exit closed, meaning that we actually lost a whole lap early doors. Now, listen, it's a long race, so it's, you know, it's not disastrous, but, you know, a whole lap to make up is extremely difficult, especially with the front-running cars. So, uh, as well as the team did, and they did very good at the pit stop, uh, it was nothing nothing more they could do, really. There's more fuel. We had to put more fuel in the car, and unfortunately, the pit lane just closed. So, I think it was the right decision to pit, but we were just a little bit unfortunate. Uh, and, you know, if we knew the pit lane was going to close, because you, you don't know when the pit lane is going to close, really. Like, you know the safety cars are coming around the corner, but you can't control the person that closes the pit lane, can you? They're, they're going to close it. You won't know when they will. Um, so, yes, unfortunately, it did mean we went a lap down, and when Darren got in the car, we were P9 after the pit stops, P9. Now, Darren uh, was in the car for about an hour and a half stint. Uh, was doing a very good job, nice, solid, consistent lap times, exactly what you need in the endurance race, and managed to move us from P9 to P5 by the end of this stint. Uh, one thing to mention uh, when it came to the strategies about how this worked, uh, the decision was to not change the front left tyre. So the front left tyre had to go through the whole of this race. Uh, by itself, no changing. Uh, the idea of it is to basically just try and save some time in the pit stop. You will lose uh, a considerable amount of time changing the front left, but it's up to you really whether you decide to do it. If that front left can hang on, or if maybe you change it halfway through uh, the race and try and make up that time uh, that you've lost uh, with the faster, fresher left tyre. So as I said, yeah, Darren did a very good job, uh, a solid about an hour and a half stint. Uh, and then with about an hour and 50 minutes to go, uh, it was time for me to jump into the car for the very first time and my very first race. Now, going out on track for the first time was a little bit nerve-wracking, uh, joining midway through a race. But thankfully, it didn't take me too long to get used to it, because really, all you got to do is just get your head down and get your laps in. As you can see as well here, I didn't really come out in much traffic. Now, when I first went out, the car felt really good, and surprisingly, uh, I was actually catching the leader. After about five, six laps in the car, I'd managed to catch the leader by quite some margin. So uh, you can see the leader up ahead as we overtake this uh, back marker. Now, at this point, we are P8 and a lap down um, on the leader here. We're actually a couple laps down after the safety car. But this is essentially just to try and unlap ourselves. So we'll go through a lap now. Uh, of this track, uh, the Silverstone National Circuit, as we go down the old pits. So these are the old pits, not the new ones that you get in the F1 that these days or you're probably used to. So I'm currently in the tow of P1. Makes quite a bit of difference in these cars, so you've got to use uh, the tow when you've got it. Uh, then going into Turn 1, into uh, Stowe there, you can see I'm fighting the car as I try and get as much speed or try and carry as much speed as possible through Turn 1. Uh, the leader goes a little bit wide there, does get too wheels on the kerb on the outside of turn one. Another back marker there. Now I'm just using a little bit more kerb on the left hand side. A little bit hesitant going to third there. Uh, but the leader seems to have a little bit of an issue uh, going into turn two there and loses a little bit of time and I just edge myself a little bit closer. Um, thinking to myself when is 
uh, a good opportunity to overtake the leader and unlap ourselves um, and uh, yeah, just get us closer to the front, I guess. I think about a move down the inside here. Look, I was really on the edge. And I'll be honest with you, I think if I had a little bit more experience, I think I could have sent that. Um, and I think I could have got the move done. But, you know, uh, it was first race. I, <laughs> I wasn't that brave. Um, so, yeah, decided to back out of it in the end. And, uh, yeah, that kind of was the story for the next two, three laps, I think. I would get really close. Uh, and I just couldn't find my way past uh, the 46 car here um, just trying to like try different moves different lines just to try and put them off but they were very solid uh, in their defense they weren't really you know doing anything in particular um, you know that gave me a big advantage uh, until this lap here so we go um, we go into stow once more Turn one, you can see you've got two wheels on the inside curb, half the car off the inside curb. He goes a little bit wide there. Again, two wheels on the curb on the left. It can get a bit squirrely if you do get two tires on there. So I've got a nice run there. You can see I've got real close. I go around the outside, then dive onto the inside, forcing him to have a tighter line into two, and he just understeers and loses a lot of speed going down the hangar straight which means I can then get the toe on the exit and I've just got enough move or I've just got enough room I should say uh, to go side by side and the next corner is a left hander I've got the inside and that is a move done on the leader uh, and that is me unlapping myself in this race behind Matthew Weymouth with a 1 minute 22.428. Ollie is in an opening gap, but of course traffic can still play a part. George Wright still fighting away with, um, I think that was car number 12 potentially. No, it is Ollie Fernal. Ollie Fernal. So Ollie, at the moment, how many laps down is he? He's only three laps down, so he can uh, at least get to one of those three back away from George Wright at the moment with one minute and 10 seconds remaining. Chris, I think we've got you down in, yeah. the, uh, in the pit lane. I'm stood on the pit wall watching them sort of down close to uh, to Cop's Corner. And uh, the, the one thing that I found really... Now, shortly after that, for some reason, I don't know what it is. Maybe it was just my driving style. Maybe it's just something I'll have to look into. Um, but very quickly, very quickly, the front left really, really started to die on me. Like I was just understeering everywhere absolutely everywhere and yeah it just did not have the pace that it had uh, previously uh, now i'm going to show you a picture right now uh, of the the tire wear uh, actually we'll wait for these guys to uh, get a move done because you can see the toe here in the mirror so they get the toe uh, this car behind me gets the toe uh, and gets a move uh, done into turn one um but yeah, I just don't have the grip. I just do not have the grip because the front left is just absolutely uh, dying uh, on me. And I, I was frustrated because uh, I didn't really understand why the pace had suddenly dropped off. And it wasn't really until I was outside the car that I realized that, you know, actually, you know, <laughs> tire wear, real life tire wear. Sounds strange, but I've never experienced it in real life. You know, you never experience these things when you just drive in your normal road car. Um, so yeah. So it's like the first five, six laps caught the leader, overtook the leader, and then when the tyres literally had got really hot, uh, the tyre wear was just horrific on the front left. But anyways, I'll show you the picture of the tyre now, and that was at the end of the race. And as you can see, it's it's pretty horrific. Like, it, it was amazing that the thing was still uh, was still going. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a learning curve from me. I think maybe next time, uh, if I was to do this race again, I certainly would take... A little bit more time, I think, in the, you know, look after the front left a lot more, if I could. Um, maybe not fight with the leader as much, maybe just stay in the toe uh, for as long as I can, and maybe just use that instead of fighting them, and just try and look after that front left. But, uh, yeah, a very good start, a, a huge learning curve, actually being, like I said, being in the car and actually feeling... Uh, the tyre wear go, the feeling of the front left go here, and it's very front left dependent on this circuit. Um, only real one left hand corner in the whole thing, so uh, yeah, all right hand corners. But yeah, to feel that, you know, the tyre wear actually go uh, was was uh, looking back at it now is a pretty surreal experience. You feel it in the sim, of course, um, but to do it IRL, it's uh, yeah, it, it's quite something. It's quite something. But yeah, uh, a really really good experience, I have to say. I was in the car for about 50 minutes. Uh, second half of the stint did drop off quite a bit, 
Um, but yeah, I think by the time I came to the pits, I was about P5, um, and it was time for Gordy to get back in the car. And uh, yeah, Gordy had to do his thing for the last 40 minutes. And uh, yeah, I think in the end, we finish P4. Now, of course, we still had our sister team out there that were currently P2 and about 18 seconds behind the leader. Both cars still needed to do a pit stop. And with just five minutes to go, they both head into the pits. I'm sure we'll switch to that yes, as they come. Yes, we've yep. got, got the pictures showing it. You tell us about it. Into the pit lane comes number 12. The, the jug is back out, so they are going fuel. It was a little bit of a dummy thrown there just to sort of tease us all. And... Now, very sadly for the 46, I'll see if you can spot it. Keep an eye on the guy with the fire extinguisher. All right, there he is there. There's something wrong with this pit stop. And unfortunately, the person who checks these pit stops spots it. And you're going to see it right now. It is the goggles. The goggles, unfortunately, were not down on his face. They were just on his head. Now, at the time, we didn't know this, so there's a bit of confusion, all right? There was a bit of confusion, but unfortunately, that cost them two laps. That's a two-lap penalty. So, the pit stops get done. We cross the line in P2, incredibly close, by the way, less than five seconds after that pit stop, because we gained some time there, but then... Unfortunately, for the 46 car there, they got a two-lap penalty, which means they dropped down a position, meaning that our car, the sister car, the 12, ends up winning the race. Um, in our, and, uh, yeah, unbelievable. Unbelievable. It was an absolutely brilliant race. And I think everybody who watched the stream, and there was literally hundreds of you, if not thousands, uh, I think the stream's on almost 6,000 views now. You did an absolutely incredible job. The race was brilliant. You were absolutely superb in the chat. I even had one of the commentators after the race come down and shake my hand and tell me how good all of you were. So to everybody who watched the Enduro KA uh, live stream on the MSVT um and on the MSVTV Racing YouTube channel, you did a superb job, an absolute brilliant job. Great exposure for the series, and you should give yourselves a pat on the back. But there you go. Uh, that was my first ever race. A big, big thank you to Pro-Am for giving me this opportunity. Fingers crossed we can arrange to potentially do another round or two. We'll see. Um, make sure to uh, subscribe to the MSVT uh, Racing YouTube channel and give Pro-Am some love. Check out all their socials and the websites in the description. Uh, the more word we can spread, the more positivity we can get, the more chance uh, I've essentially got of doing even more real life racing. And I think you guys do want to see it because you are absolutely superb in the chat and you're really supportive and uh, you enjoyed it so much. I think, I hope you guys want to see it again. So make sure do check out uh, Pro-Am and uh, the channel. Hi guys, it's Scott from Pro-Am Racing. So this will be the second season that we're running in the Enduro Car Series. It's actually the first year that we'll be running with two cars. And we specifically built the new car over winter with the thought process of, let's get novices, sim racers, beginners into motorsport and give them that opportunity to do that and hopefully support them all the way through onto the podium. And when we thought about who do we want to get in for round one at Silverstone, obviously Ollie was probably one of the first people that we thought about. Um, obviously he's got the experience um, in the endurance level racing, which you know the Endura Cast series is all about that. We've got five, 12, 24 hour races and it's different to sprint racing. You need to think about the strategy, you need to work as a team, you've got teammates, you've got an engineer on the radio, um, and having that experience already from the simulator, we thought that's gonna be a great fit for our team. Um, and Ollie didn't disappoint, he jumped straight into the car, the racecraft was there, the pace was there, and obviously he wouldn't have had that without that training on the simulator. So we've been really impressed. We hope to see him again in the car and, and get him that podium that he deserves. And fingers crossed, we'll, we'll be doing another video and he'll be holding a trophy. So we'll see. But that's it from me. I really hope you enjoyed this video and my first ever endurance race. Make sure to uh, hit the old like button, please, on the way out. Do subscribe. And hopefully, with a little bit of luck, I'll catch you for the next one. Take care.
Ta-da.